Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today I want to talk about shitty uses of sensing in intuitive personality types. Now, I'm talking here about people that have very strong intuition at the expense of sensing. I'm talking about shitty intuitives that have not spent any time developing their sensing functions. So I want to talk about how we can approach the intuitive and the sensing inside of us. And I want to show you first and foremost the difficulties of the happiness seeker or flow seeker. So now what you should know is intuition is your main source of energy, you know, new ideas, new possibilities, hypotheticals, what ifs, questions, theories, ponderings, philosophy, that's the intuitive's bread and butter and it's uh, what gets you going in the morning, it's your motor, your engine, it gets you feeling like wow things are fun, things are interesting. It makes sense then that the uh, intuitive that is going to struggle the most with sensing is the hedonistic intuitive, the happiness seeking intuitive, the flow seeking intuitive that lives for these energy kicks given by intuitive whims and ideas. And the intuitive that is going to be the strongest with sensing is the intuitive who has uh, had a strict education or childhood where they were taught to avoid the pursuit of pleasure, happiness and energy and to instead focus on chores, duties, responsibilities and other matters of life. So then what you can gauge is that the intuitive that pursues and lives primarily for pleasure is going to struggle with the concept of pain or with suffering or with things that are uncomfortable or de-energizing or draining or things that require your focus when you don't have it. So there's it's been said that there's a value to being able to be bored, you know, and in today's society that's quite difficult to be able to be bored. There are so many fun things we could do all the time. Pleasure is just around the corner. Uh, there are numerous events we could go to every day. There are numerous possibilities we could seek out. There's numerous things happening. So it makes sense then that a lot of us fall in the grip of this uh, temporary pursuit of pleasure. And it makes sense that this is an issue. But this is only an issue in one scenario, and one important still scenario. And that is, sensing is important only in so far as it can aid you in your pursuit of happiness. Sensing and being bored and things that require time and dedication and energy can be important because they can help you in intuitive goals you know as an idealist what you have to recognize is every day requires you to use some sensing every idea requires some use of sensing every possibility requires some use of sensing you need the ability to be able to look back at your history and to get an idea of who you are and your sense of identity to understand your resources, your skills, your abilities, your background and how to use it to put yourself forward. You need to have some kind of experience or information from your environment to back up your ideas, their realistic possibilities in the moment, what you can do, how you can put an idea into practice, what it would look like in this situation or in this specific environment. You need some sensing to be able to get an idea about what you can do right now, what possibilities lay before you right at this point of time, what you could do that it gives you the most energy and the most power in this moment. Sensing can also represent the, that ability of self-discipline, you know, organization, showing up at the same place every day, practicing the same skill for two hours every day. You know, all those things that are important for a person to become consistent in an idea or good at an idea. What you have is intuitives that mindlessly chase off their trill kicks and energy, but who never end up seeing through or finishing their ideas. It's common to get in the grip of, uh, well, in the loop of uh, intuition in which 
We only pursue intuition as long as it remains hopelessly impractical or impossible. What I see with intuitives is great, grand, big ideas that can never be put into practice and a reluctancy to try to look at immediate implications and practical steps to make it happen. What I see in intuitives such as myself is a tendency to want to linger in theory We don't talk about what's going on, we don't talk about what's happening, we don't talk about real people, real events, practical situations, but we focus on that intellectual mind palace of theories that lack practical implementation or concrete example. Now, I want to say intuition has a huge value on its own. We need it, it's important, it's great, it's the perfect starting point for any intuitive who is healthy and who is looking for energy and a hobby and a pursuit and something valuable and worthwhile to do on their days. Intuition should, as an intuitive, in an intuitive, occupy most of your time. What you want to be looking for is a 75-25 sense of rule. Spend most of your time doing what you love, but take some time every day, a few hours, to make sure it sticks, to make sure it lasts, to make sure it's possible. Recognize all the shores you need to run through, recognize all the things that you need to deal with that are right in front of you and that require your immediate attention and mustered attention and the focus and concentration to take in and to read through a situation carefully before you start speculating or predicting or thinking about next steps. Make sure you get the right information, make sure you validate and authenticate the information you do have so that you don't rush out on a whim or a very quick clue. Make sure you get some backup and use sensing as a valuable anchor. What I mean with this is make sure that sensing is there as a backup in case your plan fails, in case something doesn't work out, in case your ideals uh, have obstacles ahead of them, make sure there is some kind of backup. What sensing can give is, what sensing can act as is like a resource. Sensing doesn't give you any sense of energy in its own. Sensing is not going to reward you the way intuition rewards you as an intuitive. But sensing can become a resource. And the difference between energy and the resource is a resource is something more long term and it's kind of like a wall that can protect you and can absorb some struggles. I mean, we have bills to pay, we have uh, rent to pay, we have to move, we have to get logistics done, we have to call different shipping companies, we have to look at all those practical matters of life. And everything you do, every hour you put into this can become a resource. It can be something that builds a wall and that can stave off worry. Because when you don't deal with sensing, what tends to happen is sensing tends to become like a mountain of shit, you know, a garbage disposal area. We start smelling it and we start thinking, oh God, this is not smelling good. All those unfinished projects, all those bills unpaid, all those uh, issues I have to deal with, all those cars I forgot, all those taxi drivers I forgot to call, you know, all those things that I missed out to do because I was... I don't want to be bored, they're gonna start smelling bad and they're gonna start putting a negative odor on everything we do, a negative stench in everything we do, you know, we become the crazy intuitive that has wild ideas that they never act on, we become the inconsistent person that says and speaks with big and grand words but never has any concrete examples, we become the blind theorist that sees and has great ideas and theories but cannot be understood by any person in any meaningful way because it has no concrete examples. So what we need is first the encouragement that we are starting out in the right direction. We got a good idea, we got a great theory, we got a great possibility, now how do we make it happen? What we can do to develop sensing is take and ask for help from others. It is as simple as that. Ask for help from other people. You cannot do everything. You are not going to be good at everything. And a person that tries to be everywhere at once is only going to be a little bit in every place, but never going to occupy a place fully. So you're never going to be the master of anything. You're never going to be the professional in any situation. A person that is good at everything is good at nothing. Fundamentally, is only a little good at everything. So... 
what you need to do is learn to be comfortable asking for help from help from other people and in this recognize the limits of your own intelligence there is nothing grandiose or great or intelligent about being an intuitive a lot of intuitives have and can demonstrate high iq but can never put it to practice they can never land big well-paid jobs they can never accomplish great projects they can never achieve something they struggle to collaborate with others they take everything on their own shoulders so the fluid intelligence that we know from mensa and what we test on iq tests it's not necessarily going to be demonstrated in real life and it's not necessarily going to lead to any real life success. It can predict success to some extent, but it's not necessarily going to do that for you. Instead, what you need to be looking at is uh, recognizing the intelligence and the powers and abilities of other people. And this means also learning to take on the help of an accountant or an editor, somebody who can look at your book, somebody that can proofread, somebody that can help you through the process of realizing an idea. And that can also mean relying on the help of family members. And this is especially if you show like any kind of uh, neuropsychiatric uh, cognitive disabilities, for example, ADHD or autism, uh, if you are a person that has uh, any of these disorders, and this is not intuitive in any way, uh, help is a necessity, you know, somebody that can help you through bills and laws and everything that can be difficult for you to take in. Uh, but for an intuitive as well, and for everyone in society, help is important, help in a sense of... Uh, what can we do together? You know, a lot of great intelligent people struggle to collaborate with other people and so can never build big companies. Everything is tied around their name. They end up doing everything and they only have a finite amount of hours every week. So they cannot do everything well enough to build it big enough. So what we're looking at as intuitives when we're developing sensing is an awareness of our limitations and an awareness of how far we can take them, but also an ability to learn to manage boredom. I came into this earlier in this video, but if you think about it, take a few hours every week, take one hour every day where you can allow yourself to be bored, where you can sit down and not do anything, or sit down and deal with something that you don't like, that you know is not interesting to you. And then, well, as soon as you're done with that, allow yourself to be completely happy and immersed in intuition and in other projects and in other ideas. When you can deal with the worries and the stress and the draining uh, influence of the sensing functions, when you can free yourself from them and deal with them in a proper way, you can also release the ability to truly feel true energy and happiness while immersed with intuitive projects. No longer worrying, oh, I should be doing this, oh, I should be doing my homework, I should be studying that, I should be taking care of this. The intuitive that can free themselves from sensing and can deal with their shores in a healthy manner is going to be able to do better and is going to be able to be happier in the end. Happiness is two things. It is the energy we feel when we do something we love. And it's also the relief we feel when we have been able to deal with the obstacles that lay in the way of being happy. So with that in mind, we have a long way to go. And this is also important to recognize. Don't overshore yourself. Don't overwhelm yourself with sensing. Don't put in too much effort. Set realistic expectations for yourself. If you struggle to deal with the sensing to a horrid degree, as it's the case with people with ADHD, for example, or autism, then you do need help and you need to manage it. You need to reduce it so that it doesn't overwhelm you. If you're a highly sensitive person, you also need to work with and deal with overwhelm. If you are an intuitive, almost always if you are an intuitive, you need to decrease and make sure sensing doesn't become too much. And that means set realistic expectations every day, one hour, not more. Not more than what you are comfortable doing, not more than what you are able to deal with. And if it starts feeling too much, that's when you need help from other people. And then... 
when you think about it, not doing chores, not seeing through problems, not dealing with the important sensing matters of life, that leads to a greater sense of overwhelm because we can see the mountain is there, all the chores we should have done, and we can see it growing bigger and bigger. And at some point it can just become too overwhelming. And that's when I think we need a purge. And that's when we need to go through it all, burn it all, and start fresh, you know? When it starts becoming unbearably big, that's when we need to realize, okay, it's gone too far. And that can be in the case of if you cut class for too long, your studies, you're too behind, you're uh, starting to be too down on bills, your loans are too tremendous. That's when you need to really look into a purge. And a purge can be starting over, take a new year at school, Fine, it sucks, but if it can help you get through it, it's important, it's a necessity. If it's too big, ask for help, and if nobody can help you, or if it's too much, take another year, take extra time off, and find a way to start over. Ask a finance consultant, ask if your loans can be cut, ask if you can find a second income, or get help with your economy, you know. What you need to be looking at is just uh, ways to deal with sensing. Yes, it sucks. Even as an intuitive, you need to be good at sensing to live and thrive in this life that requires us to be a little bit of it all. But I think you're gonna get through it. And I hope this video could help you. If this video helped you, feel free to leave a like, share and subscribe, and to share it to other people that you think might help from this message. And of course, visit patreon.com slash erikdor and leave a pledge or ask a question or submit a request for your next video. I hope to see you all in the next video. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you guys later.